Let's talk about the Baltimore Ravens now, who made the playoffs and had a pretty disappointing end to their playoffs with the return touchdown by Sam Hubbard, I believe. Yeah, Sam Hubbard. And, you know, obviously they didn't have Lamar Jackson for like the last five-ish games. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But the Ravens had a interesting offseason. They didn't, like, shock the world with any of their, you know, free agents, their picks. You know, that's why when you look at the additions and departures, there are not too many big moves. I mean, you obviously, you bring a note out Beckham, who I think is really interesting. Rocky Austin, you drafted Zay Flowers, you know, you get some more help. Uh, for Lamar Jackson was what it seems to be the biggest thing that they wanted to do this offseason with the backup uh, receivers they brought into. Brought in Trenton, Trenton Simpson, in my opinion, was the second best linebacker in this draft. And so maybe that's a signal to, that maybe Patrick Queen won't be here long. And then you get Caillou Blue Kelly, who should be a decent backup cornerback. But then you look at the departures. Ben Powers, who uh, went to Denver, you know. Uh, then you have Marcus Peters, maybe. I don't know. He's still a free agent. They still could bring him back. You lost Josh Oliver back up tight end. And then also Calais Campbell, who they let go of, which never made... That doesn't necessarily make the most sense for me. I like some of the guys they have as a backup, the young guys. But I still think Calais Campbell is an absolute beast of a defensive lineman now in Atlanta. So let's go ahead and talk about the Baltimore Ravens and their offensive stats last year. Uh, they were 16th in total yards per game, 28th in total passing yards per game. They were 2nd in rushing yards per game, and 19th in total points per game. Which, I mean, this all makes sense. Um, they're not, you know, they should hopefully be a better passing offense uh, this next year with Todd Monken now as offensive coordinator. But obviously, they're rushing yards. They got a good run defense or run offense. Obviously, you have probably the second best rushing quarterback in the NFL with Lamar Jackson. And so. I would like to see the total points go up, and that should with the more weapons they have, yards, and obviously passing yards as well, as I believe they definitely should be more of a, not, I wouldn't say more of a passing team necessarily, but I, I would expect it to grow. I mean, I know Lamar Jackson has talked about wanting to become more of a passer, even though he's not a, a bad passer. He is a great passer, but, you know, maybe maybe you pass the ball maybe a little bit more than you have designed run plays for Lamar Jackson all the time because they do run design run plays for Lamar a lot, to be honest. So let's go ahead and talk about their offense, which I think is solid. I think it's a solid offense. You take a look at their offensive line. You got Ronnie Stanley, who is a great left tackle. Ben Cleveland, serviceable guard. Tyler Lindebaum, one of the best centers already in the NFL. I like Kevin Zeitler and Morgan Moses is a solid right tackle for now. He's a stopgap, and obviously not long term. And so, obviously, you have Lamar Jackson, who had 2,200 yards last year, 17 touchdowns and 7 interceptions. Obviously, he played a lot less games, so that wasn't the full number of a full 17 uh, season game season. You got Mark Andrews, uh, probably their best receiver, at 800 yards and 5 touchdowns. And then you look at the new revamped wide receiver room with Odell Beckham, who's coming off the injury. Zay Flowers coming from Boston College. Rashad Bateman also coming off an injury who I think is, in my opinion, their best wide receiver. I think Rashawn Bateman is the best wide receiver in this in this receiving core as of now. You know, I think Zay Flowers probably will. I wouldn't be surprised if Zay Flowers turns out to be that by the end of the season. But I, I'm, I'm a big Rashawn Bateman fan. Absolutely huge Rashawn Bateman fan. And obviously got J.K. Dobbins, who may not be playing this year. Uh, he's holding out with that franchise tag, I think. Or I don't think it was a franchise tag, but he's holding out, I think, I, I, if I'm not mistaken. And if it was either a franchise tag or he's just holding out for a new contract, which I don't necessarily understand. He's a great running back, but there, his situation is not that he's necessarily, you know, he's too good for the money he's getting. It's more of that I want you to be healthy, you know. How, show me that you can stay healthy for a good chunk, you know, like 90% of the season, and then I'll look to pay you. You know, he's had some injuries. So I, I understand why the Ravens wouldn't be going out of their way to pay J.K. Dobbins, especially when they got Gus Edwards, who I'm a big fan of Gus Edwards. I think he's also a pretty good running back, uh, pretty good running back as well. So now you look at the offense, you got some depth, guys. Uh, also, I want to talk about Patrick Ricard, a good fullback for the Baltimore Ravens. You talk about some of the receivers, you know, they added Nelson Aguilar, they added Laquan Treadmill, but the guy I'm really interested in with when it comes to these backup wide receivers is Devin DuVernay. You know, he played a lot, and I was just looking at some of the highlights, and I'm like, this dude is good. I think he's one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL. And, you know, and I think that's some good props. And then you, uh, I mean, I like Daniel Filele. Uh, right tackle, I think he's 
from Minnesota. Like he's like six seven or something. It's insane. I like Isaiah Likely as the backup tight end there. And I, I mean, I think that's it when talking about this depth here. Um, so this offense should be a lot better. And I expect this team to be a playoff team, a playoff offense. And I wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't be shocked if this is a top 10 offense this year. So let's go ahead and talk about the Ravens defense now. Last year, they didn't have a terrible defense. Uh, 10th in total allowed yards per game. They were 26 in a lot of passing yards per game, which obviously wasn't good. They were 3rd in total allowed rushing yards, which is pretty solid. And allowed points per game was 3rd with 18.5. So they have a good defense, obviously, on the ground. You know, they, they're good at not allowing teams to score points. But their passing defense is, is a work. And I'm definitely interested in that. You know, I think they should try to bring back uh, Marcus Peters, which I think he's not the greatest cornerback. He's not how he was. He's not in his prime anymore. But he's a solid cornerback to have, in my opinion. And I think he, I, I would say, I think it's not safe to say, but I would take him over, you know, Rocky Austin, to be honest. So, that you know, obviously we're, you know, I think they should definitely look into that. But let's go ahead and talk about this defense here. You have Marcus Williams and Cal Hamilton, who I think are two great safeties. And Cal Hamilton going into this into his second year, I expect big things. I expect big, big things from Kyle Hamilton. And so, again, I'm excited for that 100%. You talk about the linebackers. Obviously, they have Roquan Smith, who had an absolute heck of a season. 86 tackles and two sacks. To uh, When you look at his stats, Patrick Queen is is definitely an interest he is a very interesting uh player to talk about some people love him some people don't like him i think he's an average linebacker i know it sounds cliche or kind of just boring but he can do some very very good things right and i think you know he could you know he could possibly at the end of the season deserve a good contract from the ravens but he could very well not be on the ravens by trade deadline day or by after trade deadline if that makes sense and, you know, now you talk about the cornerbacks. Marlon Humphrey, obviously, one of the top cornerbacks in the NFL, who had uh, three interceptions last year. Rocky Austin and Brandon Stevens, I'm, you know, I would like for them to bring back Marcus Peters or make any other move at cornerback because this is, I, I'm not the biggest fan of their nickel and obviously Rocky Austin. Rocky Austin's a good cornerback, three, four, you know. You can come in on times, you know, if you want to run six, you know, guys on the field for the secondary, you can bring in Rocky Austin, but. As a starter, I'm not the biggest fan. I, I like their defensive line. I'm definitely interested in their defensive line. We talk about Justin Matabuke, who I think is a solid uh, defensive line guy. Michael Pierce, who I think is an absolute beast at defensive tackle. You got Adafi Owe, who should have a pretty a good season coming off the edge. And you look at some of these other guys. Trenton Simpson as a rookie. Um, um, where is he at? David Ajabo, also probably going to be coming off the edge. Travis Jones from UConn, who I'm a big fan of, who I think could be a pretty good defensive tackle, nose tackle in, in on the interior. Um, t- talked a little bit about Caillou Blue Kelly. Uh, Gino Stone is a decent backup safety, in my opinion. So, again, they got a good defense. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be top 10 or anything, but at least I think it's going to be serviceable. You know, I think it's going to help win games. I don't think they're going to rely heavily on the defense, especially when they got a good offense as well. So, again, big venom of their safeties. That That's the their best part of this whole defense is Marcus Williams and, and Kyle Hamilton. And I'm expecting big things from that duo in the, in the uh, secondary. And so I'm excited. Obviously, full off, you got an offseason, Roquan Smith, and, and so he should be a great linebacker next year. And, is, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see what this defense looks like. It's not going to be crazy. You know, not top 10. But it should do enough to help win games when this offense with Lamar Jackson is that good. So, well, you know, we'll see what happens with the Baltimore Ravens. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below, what did I get right and wrong about this team? And subscribe while you're at it. And hit the notification bell if you're still waiting for your team to get talked about. And if you want to see the full preview of this team's division, go ahead. The video should be on the screen right now. Peace out.